So, on the agenda for today is to test the Llama Index-based package chain of table. The use case of this tool is to improve how large language models can process tabular data. Because they are very poor at this at the moment, it seems to be a very appealing use case for a tool like NIME. As NIME is pretty much made for tabular data, so we'll go through four examples. And what we will test is each example once with a local model, which is a Dolphin 2.6 Mistral quantized model and then GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. So, this is a notebook they provide, and I will just go ahead and set this up including the local environment on my machine. I will then spin up my local large language model server with a 7 billion parameter model. And then we'll go through this piece by piece and check what works and what doesn't. Alright here we go, I've made some modifications, for example. I've added my OpenAI key and also set up lines so that I can quickly switch between the different large language models that I want to work with. So now we'll just go and start executing some of those cells down to the first example. As you can see, the first example seems to be about a movie dataset about movie awards. And we'll use that to test this tool. So the next cells that I'm going to execute now will start the process. And what's written in green and blue below will actually help us to see how we are going. It looks like the table has been processed and has been loaded. Just looking at the question, the right answer should be William Friedkin. There we go, and I'll be back once this is processed. A few moments later. Well, that didn't work so well. It crashed after just about two minutes. That makes it zero out of one attempt. Let's go again. So we're now 40 seconds and then something changed. It looks like it found the right row. So let's see how we go. I'll be back once this finishes running. Although it looked very promising at the beginning, it failed again after running for more than 4 minutes. So I'm not sure what we do about this one. I don't want to be too hard because it actually found the right row but didn't give the output. So let's go with 0.5 out of 2 attempts for the mystery model. Alright, so I've just set everything up to now test another model. So, we will use GPT 3.5 in this run and I've already executed all the rows down through this one. So, let's send it off and see if it works this time. Okay, it errored out pretty much immediately, so then let's give it another shot. Okay, let's try one last time. Alright, so GPT 3.5 is definitely not working. Okay, let's give this one last shot this time. I'll be running it using GPT 4. So the latest model, again, I've already executed everything so that we can just start splitting things up. Okay, this actually seems to have worked. So let's see what the response is. The answer is William Friedkin, and that is correct. Awesome, so example 1 seems to work with GPT-4. Alright, now let's test the second example. I've reset my model to my local 7 billion parameter model and have loaded this dataset, which is about weather data. And we want to see how much rain there was in June. So let's give this a go. Okay, that errored out. It didn't really do anything. So let's give it another try. A few moments later. Alright. This time around it seems to have done something. So it selected the right row to look into, and it aircored out. Okay, I mean it got again reasonably close. Okay, so next round we will run with GPT 3.5 again. I've already executed everything so let's give it a try, it's a very interesting response. Let's try again. That is actually the right answer. Okay, let's see if we can replicate that. 
Okay, so that was two out of three. Alright, now I'll try the same again with GPT-4. It has selected the right row and then also the right field. And let's see, yeah that's correct. Okay, so GPT-4 got it on the first try. Alright, now that we are halfway through the tests that I wanted to do, I've decided to skip the Mistral 7 version as it's just not performing for these types of tasks. And I will demonstrate those examples that really worked. But I'll give you an update on the overall performance and the scores of the different models at the end of this video. Alright back to the last example, this dataset is about games. And it's loaded up. And the question is, which televised ABC game had the greatest attendance? And I looked at this before, that was Kansas City Chiefs Arrowhead Stadium on 16th November 1998. Last up, GPT-4, so let's try. Okay, so we've just done something. It's filtered for attendance and TV time. Alright, that seems correct. Okay, let's try one more time just to check for consistency. Alright, that's again the right response. Cool, that's cool. Alright. Now let's try all these three models again with the baseline example. We simply pass a serialized table in, so, we are still using the televised games dataset for this. And we start with Mistral 7. Okay, so this approach 1 out of 1. And that's incorrect, but it's also much quicker. That's correct, 2 out of 3. Next up for the baseline example is GPT 3.5. Okay, 1 out of 1. Okay, that's 3 out of 3. Great. Last up, GPT-4 for the baseline example. That's not right. That's correct. And that's incorrect. So 1 out of 3. Quick recap. So we've tested the movie dataset, the weather dataset, and the TV dataset on chain of table and we've tested the TV dataset on the baseline model, which actually doesn't use chain of table. Looking at the results, the movie dataset and the T-Vision dataset performed fairly poorly, although I have to say that the movie dataset performed slightly better because we had fewer failures. The weather dataset performed all right, I guess, but still only to be used with GPT 3.5 or 4. And I was really really surprised by how well the baseline looked. Because this baseline is supposed not to work so well, that is why chain of table actually exists. So in conclusion, what I will go and do maybe in one of my next videos is go and at least implement this baseline solution so that people can play around with that. And once I've implemented that, I may actually test that with a local 13 billion parameter model to see if that maybe works a bit better. And I'll also try and look into whether there's something wrong in the backend with the prompt templates for these locally run models. That's one of the hypotheses that I have on what may be going wrong. That said, it's a bit difficult to understand where the issues are coming from given that the debug mode is not really available. So you don't really know what's going on when your local model on the server side receives a request. But you can't really see what it responds, you just see that it responds. So pretty hard to debug. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and let me know what you think about videos like this.